NVIDIA's Blackwell is overheating, eight gigabytes of VRAM is not enough, and NVIDIA's secret project, ooh, the details are leaking. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this Wednesday, January 15th, 2025. We're gonna start off today reminding you we have that PC giveaway where we're gonna be drawing the winner next Friday for that Corsair Vengeance PC. It's got a 14900KF. RTX 4090, love to have you over there. Additionally, in case you missed it yesterday, we announced the launch of our brand new project. Me and Reese are working on a UFD music channel. So if you wanna just listen to some lo-fi while you work or have some chiptune music going on in the background, we have more music coming out soon, but in case you wanna check out the UFD music channel, you can do so at the link in the video description. And turns out that major companies are not gonna be able to check out Nvidia's Blackwell GPUs as soon as they were hoping because they are still having overheating issues. This is according to a new report coming out that the racks of the GB200 cards, which can have up to 72 GPUs just slapped into them, are not actually thermally okay. This is not the first time we're even hearing about this because back in October, it was reported that yes, these GPUs were having overheating issues. Jensen even confirmed it, saying that there was a design flaw that caused the yield to be low as 100% Nvidia's fault and that they were gonna get back on track, but now it looks like it's not necessarily the GPUs that are faulty, but rather the design of the racks which are causing the problem. And so these companies that have hundreds of millions of dollars that are supposed to go to NVIDIA for these GB200 racks, they're not gonna be able to spend them right now until NVIDIA redesigns the racks to be more thermally efficient so that it's not actually gonna be uh, a problem for all of these companies. As far as we know, this shouldn't affect the gaming cards, the 5090, 5080, whatever, because it has less to do with the actual GPU part and more to do with the entire cluster that NVIDIA is putting together for these major companies. But I know that you're likely excited for all of the upgrades that are coming down the line, including NVIDIA's Blackwell. So I got a question right now, what are your PC specs? Are you happy with them? If you're not, Jawa is here to help you change that while also sponsoring today's video. It's no surprise that upgrading your PC on Jawa is quick and easy, especially when they're the number one gaming marketplace to buy and sell both new and and use PC hardware. Jawa as a community is built up of fellow PC builders and enthusiasts just like you. So when you're buying or selling on Jawa, it's with people who care about the hardware. On top of offering great prices on great hardware, Jawa also makes sure that all transactions are safe, quick, and secure for all parties involved. With all listings being manually reviewed by a real member of the Jawa team and the ability to verify yourself as a trusted seller, Jawa makes sure that your upgrading process is smooth and secure. And then besides the part where you deal with other people, they have a trade-in program where you can also turn your old hardware into cash. Simply enter some info about your parts and boom, there's your offer. Ready to either be put towards some hardware on Java or get the money quickly deposited into your PayPal. I could trade in my 5800X3D here for the 7800X3D that I found for only $390. Factoring in the trade-in value of 182 bucks means my upgrade is only 2 08. You can find awesome deals like this, whether it's hardware or fully built PCs on Jawa via the link in the description below. Get yourself ready for the latest and greatest today. Remember to use code UFD10 for 10% off up to $10. Huge thanks to Jawa for sponsoring today's video. You're likely not gonna find RTX 5090s on Jawa anytime soon, but we are getting new details coming out about the third party versions of these 5090s. Zotac listing out their various amp versions of the RTX 5090. And uh, it turns out that they're either making some listing errors or NVIDIA has some tweaking that could possibly be made to these GPUs. So they have their Amp Extreme Infinity as well as their Solid and Solid OC GPUs being listed on their website. And there's a couple things to note here, both in terms of memory with that Solid OC being said to have 30 gigabits per second of memory, which is only supposed to be on the 5080, not the 5090. Video cards is speculating that this is likely an error, an oopsie typo. If it is, is true, this could mean that there's some wiggle room in what GPUs actually perform like, especially if the OCs are allowed to not just tweak the clock speed, but then also the memory speed as well. That could lead to at least a slight difference in cards. But then also the thing to note here is that that Amp Extreme Infinity is gonna be shipping with a 600 
100 watt TDP. A fast and furious GPU consuming all the power that you could possibly deliver to it. And Nvidia giving us a blog post on what to expect in terms of performance because they showcased Valorant hitting 800 FPS with the RTX 5090. But there's a couple other things to note here. Number one, that's with sub three millisecond PC latency, which is absurd thanks to Reflex 2. But also that 800 FPS that they're delivering is at 1440 so this is one of the pieces of tech that NVIDIA came out with at their RTX 50 series announcement, but it's not exclusive to the RTX 50 series. It can also be used on older cards, but their framework technology allows your mouse position to make more sense in terms of where you place it versus where the GPU frames are. And so it swaps those out and then does some in painting to fix the framing to make sure that it all looks okay. It's a piece of complicated software that essentially means that you drop the latency from 56 milliseconds in a game like the finals down to 14 milliseconds. And as far as I've heard from all of the reviews of RTX Reflex or NVIDIA Reflex, whatever they're calling it, uh, it is it is fairly effective. So it looks like Reflex 2 is gonna be coming out to all RTX GPUs. You can take advantage of this. You don't have to be on the latest and greatest to have that happen. But NVIDIA's latest and greatest all have over eight gigabytes of VRAM. But in case you're wondering, how bad is it to have a GPU with that little memory? Well, PC game hardware did a comprehensive overview of comparing the 7600 to the 7600 XT in a ton of different games with a ton of different settings and resolutions to see what is the overall difference from going to eight gigabytes to 16 gigabytes. And the answer is it's quite considerable. So when it comes to just rasterized performance, that's without ray tracing or any funny business going on, at 1080p, you lose about 12% only having eight gigabytes of VRAM. At 1440p, you're looking at it about 15% loss and then at 4K, you're looking at a roughly 21% loss. But then when you turn on ray tracing, it gets significantly worse. At 1080p, you lose about 30%. At 1440p, you lose about 35%. And then at 4K, you lose about 44%, which is significant. However, one of the things to note with all of this testing is that it's not just the averages that matter, but there are certain games where having that limited amount of VRAM is going to significantly degrade your experience. So you can see on the raster side, games like Horizon Forbidden West lose 55% of their performance. Stalker 2 has an anomalous 75% performance loss. And then you have a bunch of games that are roughly 25 to 30% performance loss as well. Then when you turn on ray tracing, it gets significantly worse. Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart losing 65% of its performance. Indiana Jones Great Circle losing 77.5% of its performance. Just massive reductions in total performance. And you might be wondering, 7600 versus 7600 XT. If you look at the specs on these two cards, they're basically just the clock speed difference and the VRAM. So they're roughly identical to each other. So this data that's coming out shows that eight gigabytes really can limit your experience, not just at 4K, not just at 1440p, but losing 12% at 1080p can be significant for a whole bunch of gamers who are out there. We already know the B580 is 12 gigabytes of VRAM. We already know that the 5070 is 12 gigabytes of VRAM. We already know that the 9070 series is 16 gigabytes of VRAM, but there are other cards that could could be launching 50 60 is that going to be only eight gigabytes it could potentially be losing out because of that you also have things like the uh 9060 we don't know how much vram that's going to have however one of the things to note with this testing is that this was done with amd there is another nvidia card that could be tested the 4060 ti has both an 8 and a 16 gig version i would love to see them potentially do a follow-up or maybe we could do that here at uft tech i would have to get my hands on a 4060 ti 16 gig in order to do that testing but finally Finding out exactly does it make as big of a difference on NVIDIA as it does on AMD could be good data to have because maybe AMD is more sensitive to the lack of VRAM than NVIDIA is. That, that could be a potentiality. We'll have to wait and see. We'll obviously need more data moving forward to, to make a definitive answer. But Reese definitively brings you some deals. Hopefully he can save you some money. Yo, welcome back to UFT Deals, bringing the hottest tech deals on the internet. Happy Wednesday, everyone. Hope you guys are having a good day and Hey, let's jump straight into the deals. Starting off, we have the EVGA X12. This wired gaming mouse is available in white for only $9.99, making it $20 off. And I have to say, it's probably the best looking sub $10 mouse out there. But then next up, we have the Logitech Yeti GX. This dynamic USB microphone is going for $109, making it $40.99 off. And then lastly, we have the ASRock Phantom Gaming 27 inch 1440p, 180 hertz IPS gaming monitor, which you can pick up for $147.77, making it $92.22 off. 
somewhere. And hey, with that, the deals are done. You can find these and more linked in the video description down below. But until next time, I'm gonna hand you off back to Brett for the rest of your hot news. Cheers. Well, Reese, it turns out that TikTok users feel like they're getting a bum deal because the app is supposed to be leaving the United States this coming Sunday on January 19th. This is part of a bipartisan legislation that was pushed through both the Senate and the House was signed by President Biden and then has now made its way to the Supreme Court to see if that ban can get delayed until the new administration takes place this coming Monday. However, according to all of the legal uh, implications that I've been reading, it doesn't look like the Supreme Court's likely to do that. It still is possible. However, getting around, to the point of this story, it turns out that uh, a lot of these TikTok users are just fleeing for another Chinese hosted social media app that is not implicated in this bit of legislation that is banning TikTok, specifically its parent company, ByteDance. Instead, the app Red Note it is now the number one most downloaded app on the Apple App Store. It's only 34th place on Google's Play Store, so that's kind of an interesting dichotomy there. But Red Note, also known as Xiao Hongshu, is supposed to be the place where uh, these TikTok refugees are going to be going uh, while they are losing their favorite app right now. We actually did a tangential video to Xiao Hongshu roughly two months ago that has to do with the app dollar and just trying to understand their marketing strategy. You can watch that if you click the card in the top right hand corner. It's not quite related, but it is interesting to see that they're just moving over to another app that likely could potentially be implicated in a future ban down the road. But speaking of the future, that's what Asus wants us to think about, specifically their BTF 2.0 connector, because that's now being announced, where their new cableless GPU connector can deliver up to a thousand watts on their heavy copper pins, allowing them to just have no cables for not just the motherboard, but also the GPU. This is something that uh, is missing from other back connector motherboards. Asus has implemented it in certain versions of their motherboards, and they only have certain graphics cards that have supported it. BTF 2.0 right now, at least as far as Asus has publicly said, has no support. It's just a standard that's out there now, but could potentially mean that the RTX 5090 doesn't need to have its 12 V dash two by six connector plugged in anymore. You just slot it in. And that's what NVIDIA is actually hoping to do, slot themselves into the very competitive scene that is known as the PC world, because we're now finding out details about NVIDIA's N1X SOC. This is supposed to be the first chip that they're releasing to mainstream consumers to allow them to be part of the PC ecosystem, not just on the graphics card side, but also on the CPU side. So the N1X is supposed to be an ARM-based processor when it comes to the CPU and then NVIDIA graphics baked into it. We're not sure if that's Ada Lovelace or if it's uh, gonna be based on Blackwell, but according to a Lenovo data mining setup, it looks like it's gonna be put into a Lenovo Yoga 2-in-1 16 inch that's supposed to be launching later this year. The reason we found this out is because the Yoga 2-in-1 series has a very simple naming nomenclature. It has an A in the name when it's for the AMD version, an I in the name for when it's for the Intel version, and a Q for the name when it's the Qualcomm version. And in this data setup, it looks like there is a new version that is labeled N, which could either be NVIDIA, Nintendo, or NiceHash, maybe, who knows? But this is also being found out in a bunch of different places like job listings with the N1X being listed there. This is something that has been rumored for quite some time that NVIDIA is getting into it. Now we just have more details that the SOC is going to be labeled the N1X. Looks like it's definitely going to be launching here in 2025 and hopefully won't cost the $3,000 that they're charging for their little Mac mini AI box and should be significantly cheaper. We'll keep you posted as we find out more about the N1X when it comes to benchmarks, specs, all of that kind of stuff. I'm kind of excited for it specifically because it can rectify the biggest problem that is happening with the Qualcomm chips. Because yes, you have that ARM CPU efficiency that makes it both performant as well as battery efficient and then makes it good when you take it off of the plugged in power. But Qualcomm is particularly bad when it comes to its graphics card. It is just many generations behind when it comes to performing both in just traditional synthetic benchmarks, but then also in gaming. It has next to no support. Qualcomm has been really bad at drivers, really bad about getting the support. They canceled their dev kit. It just looks to be a crap show. And if Nvidia does anything well, better than all other GPU companies, it is released consistent updates with drivers to make sure that their video cards are supported 
on Windows at the very least. They are working on Linux. But NVIDIA giving graphics driver support on an ARM chip could potentially mean that the N1X is the best of everything. It can potentially beat AMD when it comes to the integrated graphics, but then also beat Intel and AMD when it comes to the efficiency game for its ARM architecture. So I, I'm intrigued by it. I want to see how this plays out. This could be I don't know, maybe even better than the Strix Halo down the line. I would love to see that. And I'd love to see what you guys have to say in the comments. We got Agro saying, NVIDIA putting the embargo for reviews of the 5080 on the same day as the release is a big slap in the face of consumers. Instead of allowing potential customers to make a well-informed decision, people are going to make a blind purchase without any third-party reviews. Or if you wait for the reviews, you might be SOL on the initial batch of those cards and they could be sold out. High class move, NVIDIA. And then DK Man agreeing, also saying NVIDIA being anti-consumer pushing the 5080 reviews to release it. Yeah, I think it's uh, I think it's nonsense. They could at the very, very worst, just shift it to the 29th, the day before, even if you don't want to give that much, but like to do it day of is, is kind of ridiculous because it's not just likely to be day of, it's also likely to be time of, right? Like uh, normally these embargoes, I'm not familiar with it because I haven't signed anything, but normally they launch at roughly 9 a.m. Eastern, which is when stores would be opening over here for you to be able to get the graphics card, or they would, you know, shift it to 8 a.m. Or like that's happened where Micro Center has shifted their opening hours to when the embargo launches. Ah, it's just it doesn't put a good taste in my mouth for what they're what they're trying to accomplish here. Then Dude E saying, I will start referring to the TI Super series as Tissiper from now on. Seriously, much better. Thanks, Brett. I uh. I did that when they originally came out. We had the 4070 Super, then the 4070 Tissiper, and then I think I called the 4080 Supper, just so that there was some variation and I didn't have to keep saying Super. And then we got Hypernova saying, did anyone else catch that I'm your Brian host at 10 seconds? One massive clock saying, see, I thought he said I'm your burnt toast in Supreme DP saying he always says I'm your brick most, which both, both correct. And then Aleph saying, brace yourself, everyone. We are in the phase of AMD GPU hype up. We've seen this before and needless to say, it is best to lower your expectations. The higher we ride up, the harder we fall down. Oh, for sure, for sure. But you know, when the benchmarks are coming out and all of the, the early signs are pointing to that it's gonna be good, I just gotta talk about it because that's what we have right now. And I also know that AMD is prone to uh, not making the most proactive decisions when it comes to their GPU department. So I'm not, I'm not gonna be let down. I also won't try to say I told you so either. But I will say that I will see you back here for more uh, tech news tomorrow. See you then.